And most of the time, we, we, we will be like, I will give him a test of his mercy. I, I, or he says, I will give her a test of her mercy. And I will make her taste what she did to me. That is vengeance. That is revenge. You cannot owe revenge and still owe forgiveness. You can't say, I will revenge, then I will forgive. That's not forgiveness. If your partner does something wrong, that's why you have to come up plain, communicate. Many of us did not see the adults ahead of us love well. So thereby, they gave us no blueprint for what love is and how to love well. So we have to learn this thing in the process. And the vulnerable moment I have with people is telling them, I have no model for love. So I had to go through the experience and it's always messy when you have limited understanding of something or no understanding at all. And that is the reason relationship is really tough because there's no particular model that works for everyone because we are all a working process trying to learn through this experience and it is messy. So this is why I say that the choice of love is one of the hardest choice to make in life. And in this video, I want to share with you the 10 love mistakes. Why you are struggling with love. Number one, partial or incomplete love. And I want to explain this because it is very deep. I will take a little time on this very point. The fact is that whenever we go out to love, we go out first with the attraction. And generally, whenever somebody says, I love this person at first sight or whatever makes them say I love, it's because they felt something. And that feeling is a feeling that is an attraction. In order to buttress this point, there are three Greek words that are used for love that I would like to introduce here, which you might already know if you do read your Bible. The eros, the philio, and the agape. A guy can meet a lady today and just say, I love you. And he means what he says because he really feels the palpitation in his heart for that lady. And it is just an attraction. That is why in the book of Judges, when Samson met the young lady and he told his father, get her for me. Scripture says though, but Samson told his father, get her for me. She looks good to me. So to him, it's about the attraction. It's about the looks. And most of the time, when we go out in search of love, the first thing we see is the looks. And most people just go with that looks and that is all they see. And that is where I say this is a partial or incomplete love. This is a love mistake that a lot of people make. Eros means the sensual feeling, which is the romantic love, which is meant for marriage as a Christian. Christian singles are not meant to engage into this. The filio is a friendly love that you are fond of someone, you like someone, you are attached to someone as a friend, and you really care about this person. And then the agape is the decision-making love, which is it is not based on feelings, it is not based on emotions, but it is a decision, a commitment. And all of these are the three things that you need to have a complete love. And when it comes to relationship and marriage, dating, and all of it, you have to know that you can't go with attraction because that is just a partial love. And you cannot just go with filio, which is the friendly love. That is also partial. It has to be complete. Now, let me take this to make it practical. By the time you meet someone as a man, first of all, their beauty attracts you. And then if you want to remain in that place of beauty, the truth is you will be attracted to more than one person in your life. You have so many people that catches your fantasy. So if you're attracted to as many people as you're attracted to, which means you would say you love all of them. And what happens to a married man with infidelity in that cause? You will be like, I've fallen out of love with my wife. I love this person now because the looks is attractive to you. And that was the mistake that Samson did because all he went for with love was just based on attraction. And attraction is not wrong. It's natural because it's showing that you being a sexual being, you are okay. For you to feel arousal, it's okay as a Christian. But on this part, you cannot just go with the partial part of love called eros and then think that a relationship will succeed on that. Because most times when people feel the attraction to someone and something moves inside of them, they be like, oh, that's my spec. Your specification for love is just based on what you see. And that would be wrong to go with that alone. That is why you need the feel you, which is get to know this person. I want to know you better. I want to know more about you. Get to become this person's friend. And that is why if you even check in the context of life, in a female and male friendship, by the time they get to know each other so well and they, they, they commune so well, before you know, love can easily spark up, feelings can easily come on. 
before they may not even have felt anything for each other they were just good friends with nothing at heart but before you know because of how close they are filio can actually bring out the errors and make these friends start having some cheesy feelings in them for each other which is way some people say that friendship that catches fire is where love comes this is a very large topic which i'm not going to be able to explain everything in detail maybe in another video we'll try to do that but here in any intimate relationship you get into you need the errors you need the feel you and you need the agape which is I need the feel you because Eros can make me feel attracted to this person, which is I move sexually to this person, towards this person. But you don't want to be in a place whereby there's no feel you and you are having emotional pain and your partner feels nothing towards you, doesn't feel your pain, cannot empathize, cannot be a friend where you need a friend. You don't need to be in such a place whereby someone is just there for your body. So everybody needs someone in their life who is not just sexually moved by them, but also emotionally moved when they feel pain. And also, you add the agape in that mix. That is where you have a complete love, whereby I am patient with you. That is an agape. I don't feel it. Nobody feels patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. I don't really feel kind, but I have to be kind with you. As a partner, it doesn't mean that you have done something that really excites me to be kind with you, but I must have kindness for you, which is compassion. When you are in your weak place, you might even annoy me. Love is, is selfless, and selflessness is not something that is a feeling. It's a virtue. So all of these are agape. So when we talk about agape love, unconditional love, it is based on these things, patience, kindness. These are not feelings. And this are what makes agape love what it is. That is why God is patient with us. God loves us. He's kind to us. He is selfless. He sent his only begotten son. Same thing is expected of you. So don't think that it is some out of this world idea that when they say love your wife unconditionally and you think it's out of the world idea, you have to understand that these are the three things that involves in love, especially in a marriage and dating relationship that is leading to marriage. You need to feel sexually connected with your partner. Yeah, you need that attachment sexually and you also need the friendly love when you really care about this person emotionally you care about how they feel mentally and psychologically and then you have made the decision to agape them to be patient with them this is very important and i believe this is something that if you put into practice you solve one of the love mistakes i've taken a lot of time to explain this very point point number two one-sided love is another love mistake now, the problem is that some people love people who do not love them. And they try to force themselves on such people. Maybe some try to be kind, try to use money, try to use gifts, try to do acts of service to get these people to look at them and love them. But the problem is it can never go right when you love someone who does, who does not love you. And that was one of Samson's biggest mistake. He started loving people who never cared about him. He did not even know them. He did not even get to a place of getting to be connected to them. He did not even become friend to feel you them. But he, he had this attraction consume him that he was just sexually horny towards them. And that was why he was foolishly in love. Scripture says, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly Praise. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and we can apply this to men also. A man who fears the Lord will be greatly praised because in this generation, we have many men who don't fear the Lord and they are handsome, they build up and they look good. So also, it applies to both men and female. It's not about the attraction that you have towards this person. It's more than that. The fear of the Lord will make this person patient with you, agape you, and then your commitments together will lead you to feel each other to be friendly and be fond of each other and enjoy each other's company but in samson's case he went ahead loving someone who did not love him and that was a lopsided love and when you go into a lopsided love you only get used by someone else or the situation will become toxic because it will never be an exchange of energy and you will feel it because you are a human being and at some point you'll be tired of even doing the work you are doing so it will not even work i've seen some people who make the mistake of saying yeah i love you i know that you don't love me but i will still love you because i know maybe someday you will change your mind about me why do you do that that is wrong to do for yourself for your own good for your mental well-being 
it is wrong to even go into that venture. So do not stay on this point too long. When you love someone and you realize the person doesn't love you, the energy is not returned back. Love has to be mutual in a relationship. It cannot be intimate if it's not mutual. So into me, see, into intimacy is about two people who chooses each other and they, and they choose to be with each other. It's a choice. So if you get to love someone and they don't love you back, please redirect yourself. You did not create that love and you cannot destroy it. So there's no need trying to allow your ego to rub on you and be like, ah, can they reject me or feel dejected or the, 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 the rejection? It might actually be a blessing to you that this person shows you that they don't want you. It's for your good that you leave because if they pretend that they want you, the relationship will not get well. You might get destroyed or ruined in the process. Number three, lack of trust. Lack of trust is one other love mistake that people make. The truth is that love has a twin and that twin is trust. Love and trust go hand in hand. If you only love someone whom you do not trust, that love can never be built on a foundation of honesty, transparency, openness, vulnerability and authenticity. A person you do not trust cannot be authentic to you because you can't know them in and out. You can only hear what they say but you can't really know what they mean from their hearts. And that happened in the case of Samson and Delilah and it was a shock to me when I read that story that I saw that Delilah said something very important. She knew that Samson did not trust him. Then Delilah pouted, how can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? But that would have been a point for Samson to say, yeah, I don't actually trust you because I don't know much about you. I don't know you. You are not authentic to me. That would have been a place for communication. But because Samson was blinded by errors, because errors can be so blinding, and that is one of the reasons that God says young people don't go into sexual immorality because it will cloud your mind. It's for our good, not for God to feel like I'm the boss. Everything that God does is to protect us and keep us safe. And this thing has already clouded Samson so that all this evidence that has been shown to him, he could not even see. And he was having a partial love, thinking he is fully in love. And this person was using him. The number four love mistake people make is negligence. Most times people get into a relationship, they really love each other, they really care for each other. But because of them being together for a while, the, the, the aspect of that makes them start taking each other for granted. And what is it called? Familiarity. We get too familiar with each other that now we are taking each other for granted we don't take it serious again we don't put in the same energy again the effort is being reduced because somehow it can be tiring and putting in the same effort oh we are we even going with this it's like it's a it, it's a continuous thing it's a religious thing yeah you need to keep on putting that effort in if you are enjoying it and if you don't put it in you cannot enjoy it and you can't have an early relationship when you start withdrawing and neglecting each other thinking that, oh, let me just uh, have my time and be on my own. The relationship is not a living thing that will automatically grow and become healthy on its own. That is why a relationship is hard work. If you're not ready for it, you shouldn't have entered into it. But once you enter into it and you are committed, then be committed. You have made a choice to agape someone. You are a friend to this person. Then make sure that you are loving wholly. Do not allow this mistake to kill or cause a shipwreck to your relationship. Songs of Song says, you must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship, for they raid a burning vineyard of love to ruin what I've planted within you. Will you catch them and remove them from me? We will do it together. That is the important part. It's always about the mutual hard work. Your energy is given and energy is taken back. Like it's a flow. You can't allow one person to do the work and then the other person is neglecting that person, it cannot work. That is a love mistake, negligence. Number five, holding grudges and lack of forgiveness is another love mistake. Most times when we get into a relationship and we get with people, yeah, conflicts will come up, disagreements will happen, but how do you handle it? That's the most important part. You feel bad that this person has said something you did not like or did something that offended you, but are you going to forgive? Are you going to hold a grudge? And then before you know, start becoming malicious, keeping malice with your partner. That is a wicked place to stay in. You love this person, right? If you love them, then make efforts to seek forgiveness for your good and their good. It's for both of your good. And most of the time, we will we, be like, 
I will give him a taste of his mercy. Uh, or he says, I will give her a taste of her mercy. I will make her taste what she did to me. That is vengeance. That is revenge. You cannot owe revenge and still owe forgiveness. You can't say, I will revenge, then I will forgive. That's not forgiveness. If your partner does something wrong, that's why you have to come up plain, communicate. That is the best way. Let your partner know you've hurt my feelings. I was hurt by what you did. And if they really care about you, they will apologize. Because these are these little things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about what, you, what, what I did. Whether it's an action or inaction. Oh, you did not compliment me. You saw the new dress I, I wore. You saw the new hair that I made. Oh, I just cut my hair, fresh hair cut. You did not compliment me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You look good. You look beautiful. You look gorgeous. I love this, your dress. All these things are needed. Fast forgiveness will bring healing to the relationship without you giving room an opportunity for the devil to take a foothold. Because if the devil sees that your love life as a believer is even going well and growing, he knows that that is a threat to him. Because every good relationship is leading to a good marriage, which will lead to a good home that will bring up good children, that will bring up good societal values, morals. And the devil doesn't like that. That is why he tries to destroy relationship from day one. So that once he destroys relationships, he can get the children. And that's why he was going to Adam and Eve to make sure that he caused the separation from God such that they will be in their own human senses to operate. And that is where we have the fall of man. You don't need to allow the devil come into your relationship or allow yourself to become the devil's advocate in your relationship. Remove the grudge and forgive. It is hard. It's easier said than done, I know. But then it can be done. It's realistic, right? Scripture says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Number six love mistake is miscommunication. Most times when you are with someone, you will get to realize that at some point you are assuming a lot. Or maybe you are not really actively listening because they have really hurt your feelings of done something that has been repeated and whenever they come up trying to explain you are like you're not really listening you are just hearing them because you have a response for them in return and that is where miscommunication grows and you have to deal with miscommunication to make sure that every time you are pursuing clarity in communication you are pursuing proper communication and i have done a video about communication now to communicate through conflict and communicate in relationship you can check it up on the card above. But you have to make sure that you remove miscommunication out of the way. Because as much as we say communication is the key to a successful relationship, many people still do not practicalize this in their own relationship. Because somehow our emotions get the best of us most of the time. And this also, men are wired logically, while women are wired emotionally. No matter how masculine that woman acts, she is still wired emotionally. She sends energy and receives energy. So if she feels a certain energy from you, maybe by what you did, and she's just sensing that energy, she's going to send it back. And as men, sometimes you look at the situation and be like, you see, what really happened? This situation does not warrant this whole drama. And the reality for us is that we are logical. So now I'm trying to put this situation into my brain to process like, I'm, I'm, I'm rerunning this situation as if I'm rewinding a tape. Like, what really happened? Yeah, I'm going through every detail. But that, that wasn't enough for, for the silence. It wasn't enough for the energy I'm getting. But the woman is feeling an energy because she's emotionally wired. And all we have to do as men is to, how do you feel? We just need proper communication in that place. Let her express her feelings without you trying to tell her how oh, that is a stupid idea, how oh, that was not worth it. I'm still learning this. I'm not saying this like an expert, like as if I've done it like perfectly. That's why I'm speaking this. It's a love mistake. I'm still learning it. You have to come up and listen to her and hear her out and then get to know that she's just wired emotionally so that you can actually, you know, validate her and tell her, I'm sorry about that. 
Don't let the word I'm sorry be so heavy in your mouth. Don't let the word thank you be so heavy in your mouth. These are little things that are so heavy most of the time. Little compliments, so heavy, especially when we get into a love and intimate relationship and it feels like every way is tense. You don't have to allow the tension to catch up with you and your relationship. Please. And scripture says, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. If you get rid of these things, you can have proper communication in your relationship because you need to get rid of those. Anger, rage, and all those things won't allow you to have proper communication. You always have miscommunications. The seventh love mistake is lack of boundaries. There are so many people who go into a relationship and everything goes for both of them. They're like, just do you, let me do me. You No, no. A relationship must have boundaries. What is the boundary? What is the limit for whatever you can do? So that you can know what is the red flag. What is your, uh, like a business, you get into a business deal and you have no 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 deal breaker. So you just go, you can't even, cannot even calculate the risks and know which risks you have to take or not to take. No, 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 no. That's a bad business, a bad deal. You must know what is your deal breaker. If this happens, it's a deal breaker. It's a red flag. I'm giving up. If this happens so that you will not allow room for cheating and infidelity, one thing I want to let you know is the fact that respect is earned, but loyalty is gained. And it is only gained through having clear and defined boundaries with someone you love. Because if someone you love really knows that if he does this or that to you, that is a deal breaker between you two. They will, if they really love you and care about you, they would avoid that place to not cause the break or the shipwreck of what you share together. So all sort of lies and whatever thing, dishonesty, you should have a boundary about those things so that you know what is acceptable, what are the pillars of this relationship. You want to talk about openness, you want to talk about transparency, you want to talk about honesty, authenticity and vulnerability. Bring those in and make a boundary on them such that we can always be vulnerable. Even when I misstep, I can come to you and be vulnerable with you. This is what happened. This is how it happened. Or before you even get to a place of, you know, blowing it, you can come to your partner and start sharing and being tempted in this area so that you can work together. You're struggling with something. Share with your partner. Have a boundary on things. Such that you can save the relationship if you really want it. It's a love mistake to lack boundary and just be like, just do you. I'll do me. And you're living in the house like what? The eighth love mistake is unrealistic expectations. And you can talk about that by saying someone that is trying to say, I will change my partner when I get with them. Or someone that is just saying, okay, maybe they can read my mind. They should read my mind. They should know what I think. Why? Why should I have to explain? They should know me. We have been together for a long time. We've been together for a while. At least by now, you're supposed to know me. You're supposed to know this thing about me. You're supposed to know what I like. No, they are not mind readers. So communicate clearly. And you cannot change anybody. That is also an unrealistic expectation. You cannot change your partner. I don't think you get with somebody to change them. It's unrealistic. But also, let me go to this other area. Do not think that faithfulness and integrity is unrealistic so that you will feel like oh men will always be unfaithful so just get with anyone that you can know it's a lie faithfulness and integrity is a realistic expectation so get to expose yourself to knowledge so that you will know what is realistic and what is not realistic so that you will not get to lower your standard and think that some things that are actually good are unrealistic the ninth love mistake is unconditional tolerance. Unconditional love does not mean unconditional tolerance. Because you love someone unconditionally means you are patient with the person, but you want to see improvement. You don't want him to remain the same person. But if the person is there unwilling to improve, unwilling to work on themselves and the character issues that is giving problems to both of you, that is a red flag. That is a problem. And they need to change because if they don't, you have to excuse yourself from that situation. Unconditional love is not unconditional tolerance, such that they will say, Oh, my partner is always tolerating me, such an understanding partner. That has gone beyond limits. There has to be boundaries. I said the best for the last, which is number 10, give God your love life. I talked about the story of Samson and I realized that Samson only prayed twice in his life. He never submitted his love life to God, but he had the opportunity to hear God. When he went to fight and killed a number of people with the job on of an ass, he was so thirsty that he prayed to God and God answered him. And that made me know that he hated God. God spoke to him and said that 
water will come out of that jawbone for him to drink and he drank and that gave me an insight why did he not tell god this is my life i've been making mistake with this law of life direct me god would have done that for him and the second time he prayed was when he was dying with his enemies and some people wait till they get to make a fatal mistake before they seek god so seek god first in your relationship as you are starting tell god direct me and lead me and as you are in the middle of it keep god at the center how do you keep god at the center of the relationship by telling god i'm going to obey you because you cannot disobey god and dishonor god and still say oh god is at the center of the relationship god is not there god is at the center when you honor him with your body with keeping away with the things that it says you keep away because it is for your good so all of these i hope that this video is beneficial and you've learned something these are points that should be taken deeper and deeper for you to really get the meat out of it but because of you know trying to keep to time and you know the length of the video that's why i'm calling it short this is my youtube channel i am over my pan if you love this video hit the like button and youtube will help spread it to other people for them to hear that will be my joy that you are supporting the mission that i am carrying to bring truth and share the knowledge that i have with people here on this platform thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and watch my other youtube videos and i would love to see you in my next youtube video thank you so much for watching it is a pleasure to have you with me